Custom functions in Excel are one of the most powerful tools that you can use. Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers. And in today's VBA for basic training, I'm going to show you all about custom functions. Once this training is done, you're going to know how to create your own and first custom function. Custom functions are a great, fantastic tool because they allow you to create your own formulas, your own functions that perform a very specific task that you decide what they do. And they can create calculations. You can work with numbers or text or anything like that. And unlike the built-in functions with Excel, custom functions are written in VBA. So we're going to be using VBA to do that, but it is very simple. So even if you have never written a function before, I am going to walk you through step by step. And we're going to show you how you can use these in VBA or in Excel or on the sheet or just about any application. When you do create a custom function, they are good for that entire worksheet. Unless, of course, you use an add-in and then they're available for all of the workbooks. But we'll get into that. So user defined means you write the code. You write it out and we're going to be doing that. It's reusable, meaning you can use it as many times as you want on as many sheets inside that workbook as you want. And they're fully integrated with Microsoft Excel. They allow you to create your own customizations and functions. And I've got a cheat sheet here and we're going to be writing some code. Fully automation and very efficient. So custom functions is one of the greatest tools in Excel. So we're going to be writing our first custom function and we're going to need to get into the VBA visual basic for application to do just that. To do that, we're going to go inside the developer. And if you don't have the developer tab, or you don't see it here. You can right click on any menu and just click customize ribbon and make sure the developers tab is selected here. Once you are in the developers tab, you'll want to go into the visual basic or VBA. You can also use the shortcut alt F 11. Once you do that, you're going to open up and you're going to see this VBA editor. You're going to have a screen that looks something a little bit like this. Well, we want to write that custom function and we want to write it perhaps inside one of the modules. And so to do that, we're going to insert a brand new module. So we'll go to insert here and we can click module and that's going to insert a module. And it is here where we can write our first custom function. We'll keep it simple for our first custom function and we simply want to add two numbers together. So we can do something like function and they always start out with function unlike a subroutine which starts out with sub. We'll call it add two numbers. Okay the next step we need some parameters that we're going to define inside that. So what type of parameters what kind of input do we want? Well we're going to put in two numbers. So let's use something like number one and then we need to define what type of variable this is. Number one is it you know a string variable is it a long variable? We'll use double for our purposes in case we want to put in a fraction as double. So it's going to be double and now let's put in the second one variable that we're going to use number two also as double. So we're going to use that. And what about the result? I also want as double. So we're going to do as double. And so that means whatever this function is going to return is going to be inside a double variable. As we hit enter, the end function will automatically come up. And now what we want is we want to get that result. And that result is simply, again, the same name as our function, add two numbers. And then we need to put in equals something like, what is the action? We're going to simply add them. So we're going to add in number one plus number two. So that's going to be the actual action that we're going to be performing. So it's simply adding the two numbers together here and then it's simply going to get the result here. So the result is going to be whatever is in the cell. So now let's go inside Excel and we have this function now available. So when we click on Excel and we click on any cell inside Excel, we see equals add. And as soon as we use the intelligence, we see that we have a new custom function here and we can now put in those two numbers. So let's put in five and then we're going to do a comma because we need to separate those and then six. And what's going to do is going to add those two numbers together and that can be very helpful. Now the numbers can be based on a cell address too. So if I were to put in a six here and a seven here, I can use these cell reference to do that. So instead of the five, we can use a cell reference here. And instead of the six, I can also use a cell reference. So that can be really helpful. And we'll click on this one here. So here we've used a cell reference to replace the numbers and we can see that it does perform the action. And now if we were to change those numbers, it's automatically going to change the results. So custom functions can be quite powerful in this sense, although you wouldn't generally use something this simple, but it's a great way for demonstrating. Great. So we see inside this, let's go back into the function 
we have the keyword used to define the function, right? So here's our keyword. We're going to define that function. We want to make sure that we have parameters. So our number one and number two are the parameters. And then we have the results. So the return type as a double. So result is a double. And then we get that return. Let's go ahead and write another function. We can also build in error handling inside our function. So let's do something like this function. And then we'll do safe divide okay maybe we want to divide numbers but we don't want an error on that so let's do the dividend as double and we'll do the divisor as double and also we'll return it as a variant and this gives us a little bit more flexibility because a return can be anything a variant is a very flexible variable that we can use it can return string it can return double it can return numbers so it's very helpful so what we're going to do if we divide by zero it's going to create an error so we understand that but we want to be able to handle that error inside a function. So we can do something like on error, go to error handler. And we need to tell it exactly what to do when it's going to go to that. So it's going to go to this error handler. And right down here, what we're going to do is we're going to write exit function. That means we're going to perform some action here. Then if everything goes okay, we're going to exit that function, exit function. And normally inside of sub, you'll write exit sub, but here we're writing exit function. Now we're going to write our error handler here, error handler, make sure we spell it the same. And inside here, that means if there's an error, it's going to drop down here. Otherwise, it's going to perform the action, which we're going to write in a moment. And so here, what we can do is we can say the result is an error. So save here, let's do safe, not safe, safe divide equals error. We can put division by zero. So it's going to return the result division by zero if we are dividing by zero. So now let's take a look at the actual formula. We're going to do safe divide is equal to the dividend. My spelling is atrocious. Dividend and then divided by the divisor. Okay, so is my spelling. All right, and let's uh, divise a row. No, there we go. I like that. Okay, so basically it's going to work just fine. Now let's take a look at this so now again we have that custom function and inside here we can write down our custom function so equals we're going to call this safe divide and inside this safe divide what we're going to be doing is we'll just enter 10 and then we'll do a comma and then we'll do five so that's going to return two oops let's fix that dividend spelling okay so correct variable and now we see that there it goes to two that's exactly what I want now there. So we see that it's working, but what about when we change this to zero? What is the result? We don't want it to result in an error. So the result here now is division by zero. So it tells us automatically that there's an error. So it's kind of a nice way instead of having an error result, if we do not have that in there, it's going to create an error. So let's comment this out and we're going to see what happens when we do. So if we double click this, we see we've get an error and that's not really going to be helpful, that type of an error. So having this really, really helps us go to the air so we can simply handle this air properly and let the user know exactly what the cause of the air was. Now we can have multiple types of on air go to's. And so that can really help us figuring out what the cause is in the case above these parameters here were all required, but parameters can be optional as well. So let's take a look at what that would look like. Let's call this adding optional parameters. And inside this, what we're going to do is we're going to write a brand new function. We're going to call this function and then we'll call this calculate the total. Okay. And inside this calculate total, what I would like to have is a price. So we're going to write down the price as a double because I want to know the price based on a possible discount. And the discount though is optional. So we're going to write a comment and we're going to write an optional. And then we're going to write the variable discount. And then what type is it? It's also a double. If it's not included, I'm just going to do equals zero. So that's the default. If it is left empty, we will default it to zero. And then the result is also going to be as double. Great. So let's go ahead and write our function. If we'll put in the discount, the value of it, discount is greater than zero, then what do we want to do? Then I want the calculated total. Let's say calculate total is going to be equal to the price minus we need to add in that discount. It's simply the price times the discount and we'll do it divided by 100. So we'll do times the discount and then we'll divide it by 100 so the users can put the full discount percentage as opposed to 0.10, they'll just put in 10 for 10%. Else, what will we do if it's not, then I simply want the calculated, if there's no discount, we wanna offer an option for that. So the calculate total is equal to the price and that's it. So this is going to be no discount and this is going to be with discount. 
So that way you see this parameter is optional and I'll get rid of that end with that come up automatically. We don't need that. That's part of my automation. All right, so we've got a brand new function here called calculate total. Let's see how this might work. So let's go ahead and put in some information here. Let's say our total one is 100 and then we need one that's 120 and then let's say 90. And so we want, let's do 100 on each one of those so we can see that it makes it clear. So this one, we're gonna offer a 15% discount. This one, I want a 10% discount and this no discount. So we'll put in this price. I'm gonna leave this blank actually. And then we're going to put in discount and then I wanna put in the total. So here's where we can use our calculated total to see that. So we're gonna do equals calculated total and we can put in the first parameter is going to be our price the second parameter is going to be our discount and we're going to take a look and see that that cal oops calculate total let's define that variable calculate nice spelling we got that fixed up now the variables i got to pay special attention to those we see now that it's calculated to 85 which is correct all we need to do is drag this down and we see even without any discount it's automatically calculated so here we have our price our discount and our total and our function has calculated it properly with the discount and also with the option of variable even when there is no discount or no parameter available that optional parameter really helps so we can use those in a function very good now we can also use something like this directly inside vba so how would we do that let's go ahead and clear these out so i'm going to remove those let's say i want vba to actually place the numbers in here so we're going to run a loop from 11 through 13 we want vba to place the values here how can we do that well we can use a subroutine for that so what I'm gonna do in here is we're gonna write in sub, and then we're gonna put get totals. Any number will be fine. And now once we do that, let's call this price row dimension, our price row as long. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a loop. That loop, we're gonna start out in row 11 and go to row 13. So we can just write a little bit of a four next loop. Four price row equals 11 to 13. And we must end that next price row row great so actually what we can do is we can define those variables if we want to make it easier on us so we can read the code better so we can do something like dimension the price as double we can use the same variables if we want and we can use the discount as double also so the price is located where the price is equal to and we're in sheet one so we're going to put in sheet one dot range and what is the column where it's located let's go ahead i'm going to bring this over here we can see both at the same time we see that our price is located in column e and our discount is located in column f so e is going to be our price and what is the row and the price row dot value so that is our price and then next up is our discount. So discount, and this is gonna be just F, so we can just copy this here, paste that in here and change this to column F. And this is our discount. Okay, so now we can see how we can use that function directly inside. So where's those results gonna go? The results gonna go in column G. So I'm gonna paste this in here, and now I'm gonna put in G. Now here is where we can use the function. So we can use the calculate total, and you see that comes up automatically. So we write in price, then we write in discount, and then we close parentheses. Now, when we run this macro using F5 or the play button here, we see, oops, let's fix that price value. I need the equals there. Once we put in that equals, we run this macro and we see that automatically VBA takes care of it. And I'm gonna delete that and we're gonna show it one more time. It's quite quick there. Let's loop through this. Let's go one by one. So what we're gonna use is we can use F8 and I'm gonna loop through that. So the price row here is 11. The price here is 100. The discount here is 15. The result of that function where the price is automatically, and we go through the function. So now we see it's running through the function. It's got the price, it's got the discount, and it runs through it, and it places that directly inside the cell here. And we do it one more time. We see that it's gonna run through the sheet. It gets our variables, gets the price of 100, the discount at 10. Then it goes back to the function here where the discount is greater than zero, and it calculates that. And then the last one here, we see that now the discount is zero. So it's simply gonna calculate the totals equal to the price. And it's gonna place that directly in the cell. Very, very cool. In this training, we actually saw how we could create separate functions. The functions can use math. We can work around errors in the function. We can use actually the function to loop through that. We can also use optional parameters inside our function. And we can also use our function in VBA. I hope this 
quick training has given you a nice intro to custom functions there's a lot more we can do with functions but inside this vba for basic training i want to keep it light simple and i do always appreciate your continued support if you do like this go ahead and comment below subscribe click the notification icon bell also i've got a bunch of courses and great products for you just check the description and the links down below thank you so much and we'll see you next week